Also, That's me. You know, here we go. We already know what's coming. Who do you think I'm going to play? Who do you think I'm going to pick? <laughs> Welcome to We Need to Talk Now, presented by at and I am Alicia J, and of course, I'm here with Ashley Nicole Moss. How are you hello, doing, hello. Ashley? I'm good. Listen, we are doing this pod, and then you are off to New York. I'm right behind you, uh, my home state, because we are filming a very special 10th anniversary episode, extravaganza, everything in between. You guys are just going to have to tap in and watch what we have in store. It's honestly just too much for me to either verbalize and or summarize. So I'm not even going to try because the wheels are turning, the plot is changing. It's just a lot going on right now. So yeah, (laughs) there is a lot going on. Uh, A lot of preparation has gone into this, but it's for an amazing reason. We need to talk, it has been on, or the anniversary is coming up for 10 years of We Need to Talk, which was the yes. first ever all women sports show to talk about all sports. Um, there have been some amazing, fantastic hosts on the show, and we are going to be able to sit down with all of them in some capacity for this podcast. So we're going to have some really fantastic conversations coming up. Really excited, Ashley. Uh, number one, I'm excited because we're all going to be in the same place. You are going to be there. Emma's going to be there. Is it going to be our first Liz? time on the same? Pl- I mean, you, me, and Liz have yes. done this before, but it's going to be our first time with Emma, right? It's going to be correct? our first time with Emma. So, oh, and- Emma. Emma, we're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> but we're really excited for all of it, and we can't wait to bring it all to you right here um, on We Need to Talk Now, presented by at t So, going to be a really good time. But before we get on these planes... And get to this ep- these amazing episodes that we're going to film. We have this one. And it is jam-packed. Because we're going to talk about whether or not Asia Wilson has put together the best WNBA season on record. Woo! That's a conversation for sure. Mm. Another conversation that we're going to have is where Caitlin Clark's rookie season stacks up in all-time history. For sure. Mm. And then who do we think is going to win that WNBA championship? It, it's really a tight race right now if we're, if we're being, I mean, I know what you're going to say, Ashley. We we all know what you're going to say about the difference, <laughs> right. but there's a lot of conversation to be had about that. And then we have an amazing interview with the one and only Deja Kelly. She is actually a duck now at University of Oregon. And we're going to talk to her all about going into that fifth season, her brand and she just had an amazing time at New York Fashion Week, so we're going to get into that too. So listen, it's a it's a good show that we're about it's to a have good right show. Now. It's a jam packed show. But before we do all of that, we need to go ahead and remind you to follow us on all of our socials, especially this week, because you are not going to want to miss what we are cooking up. We got TikToks in store. You guys know I am not a TikToker. Alicia is going to make me become one this week, so you definitely don't want to miss that. Um, we have interviews you don't want to miss. We have behind the scenes images you don't want to miss. And you can only do that if you're following us on our social channels. And as always, make sure you are liking and subscribing to our YouTube page. And lastly, if you are not a visual person, you're more of an audio person, that's okay too, because we got you covered. Go ahead and scan this QR code right here, right now, and we will pop up wherever you get your podcast. That's on Spotify. That's on Apple Podcasts. So there's no excuse to not be tapping in with We Need to Talk Now presented by AT&T. Definitely tap in. Definitely leave those comments. We've been loving all of your comments. And there's going to be a lot for you to comment on today, starting with Asia Wilson. Let's talk about the season that Asia Wilson has had. Um, Over the weekend, she did something that no player has ever done. She hit a thousand points in one WNBA season, which is just crazy to even think about those amount of points in just one season. She's been lights out the entire season. Um, Not just that stat. There's so many we could go on for days, but um, she, at this point, um, she is 27 uh, points per game, the highest scoring average in the WNBA in WNBA history. Um, And even if she doesn't even score in the last two games of the season, she'll still hold that record 
And so when you look at everything that she's done, like I said, her stats and just play this year have been nothing short of incredible. Do you think this is the greatest season, the greatest single season out of a WNBA player that we've ever seen, Ashley? Um. Okay, so I don't know the stats of every single WNBA player off the top of my head right now, so I don't want to say yes and be factually incorrect. But I will say, because I mean, that goes through the entire history of the league, and I don't know those numbers off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm not going to pretend that I do. Um, But I will say in recent memory, um, I think that's a fair thing to say. Overall, it's a different conversation. We can have that deeper at a later time. I think it's an impressive season. I think that, you know, especially with all of the rhetoric that has kind of happened throughout this particular WNBA season one way or another. And I know we'll talk about Caitlin Clark in a second, who has had an incredible rookie season. But I think that, you know, all of the fandom that comes with her, I think has kind of, I don't want to say has over heightened because what she's doing is incredible. But I think that it has maybe overshadowed some of the other things that have happened in the league this particular year. And I think it also has made people forget the amount of talent that was already existing in the league before she got there. And I think that this is just a, another reminder that Caitlin Clark's phenomenal, but there are other women who are just as phenomenal and have been <laughs> phenomenal for a longer period of time. And I think that if anything, this is just another bullet point in that checklist of proving that the WNBA is more than just Caitlin Clark. Um, so yes, in recent memory, extremely an impressive season, probably the most impressive I think that we have seen in a while. But I think it also is just a bigger conversation about just respecting the women in this league who have been doing it longer and again, who have just the same amount of talent, if not more talent than Caitlin Clark has currently at this stage in her career. Yeah, I couldn't agree more that there, the, the talent runs so deep in the WNBA and people do tend to look at certain players like Caitlin Clark and just think that that is, you know, the height of the league, especially people who are new to the league. One thing that you just said that I appreciate. Please rephrase something real quick. I don't want to say more talented than Caitlin Clark, a different level of talent, a longevity um, of talent, not more talented than. I think that came out wrong. So let me just rephrase that. Not more talented than, just a different longevity of talent is more of kind of like where I'm going at. Yeah, but one thing I do want to I want to point out, and I appreciate that point of, you know, you just wanted to make sure that that was in yeah. there. What I want to point out is something that you said at the top of this is that you don't have all the stats, right? And yeah. you you can't sit here and like rattle those off and you wanted to be clear about that. And I think that's one thing that I wish people would embrace more in the W or people who are new to the sport is that you haven't necessarily, and I'm not saying you, but I'm talking about- No, you can say me, new, it's true. Go ahead, you can use me as an example. You haven't necessarily been here the whole time to be able yeah. to make assessments. And I appreciate that because I wish people would just have that more in the conversations rather than this person is the best or this person is the best. It's like, well, do you really have all the tools to say that? Um, right. I think that's the piece- that has been one of the pieces that has been missing this whole time in these conversations that have been had this year is people come in seeing one player and they mm -hmm. can't see past it because they don't have the capacity to do that. Or I would say just the history of it. And that's, I think it's also fine. like Regency. I think it's also Regency bias. And I think that people have a hard time admitting that they don't have all the facts, especially right. when they're so adamant about a particular opinion and one thing about me is everybody knows I've been covering the NBA my entire career. And although, you know, I grew up going to Liberty Games when they used to be at MSG and I talk about Candace Parker and watching her win her first championship in college and, you know, her being my introduction to women's sports, um, specifically basketball, I should say. I'd be a liar if I sat here and said, like, I've been watching the WNBA since middle school. That's not factually correct. And I think that people, because they don't want their opinion to be invalidated by people I think who have been in the sport longer or just fans of the W in general 
I think they're afraid to admit that they don't have all the facts. They don't have the history, you know, in the, off the top of their mind. And I don't think that there's anything, I'd rather be honest that I don't have the facts than wrong thinking I do have all the facts. That's kind of just how I look at things. And I wish to your point, more people would just be like, look, I'm new here. This is my opinion, but you can go ahead and school my opinion. Maybe I just, I never understood. I don't know. People are just kind of stuck in their ways, I guess. Yeah. They are. And it just makes things just a little bit more difficult when we have these conversations. But going back to Asia, um, if she's had the single best greatest season um, in WNBA history, I would say based on what I have experienced and what I have seen, I personally think she is the greatest women's basketball player currently. And her season has definitely reflected that. Um. Is she the player that in my personal life has impacted me the most? No, I would say no. But if I look at just what she has accomplished this season and what she is currently still doing, because they're currently still playing, I would say and argue that it is. Um, She has, you can't stop her, number one. You can't stop her. She is efficient on both ends of the court. Fantastic. Efficient isn't even a word that you should supersede that word when it comes to Asia Wilson. She has definitely shown us another level of what a player can be. And I mean, look, Diana Taurasi herself said that she is the best rebounder I've ever seen. (laughs) She said that. And I would echo that. To watch her play this year has been nothing but magic, in my opinion. And so from all of the seasons that I've seen, there have been some very historic ones, some very impactful ones. But when you look at her stats and what she has done, I personally think that she has had the greatest single season in WNBA history. And while there are contenders for um, MVP, I think that it should be unanimous, period. And I'll stand on that. So Well, we will see when those awards come down and when that voting comes down. I'm sure it won't be a contentious conversation on social media at all. Uh, um, <laughs> Not in the least. I'm sure it's going to be just fine. It's going to be nice and everyone's going to get along. But we're going to stick in the conversation of stats and having a very impressive season. But we're not going to talk about the WNBA as a whole and a historic WNBA season as a whole. We're going to specifically talk about a rookie season. And that brings us to Caitlin Clark, because as we know, the I think it's safe to say that, you know, with the unfortunate injury to Angel Reese, who you and I have spoken about, you know, this race really coming down to Caitlin and Angel for rookie of the year, obviously with Angel's unfortunate wrist injury, Um, taking her out of the remainder of the season. I think it's safe to say that Rookie of the Year is Caitlin Clark's award, and it'd be surprising if it went to anybody else. I think that's safe to say we would be surprised if that award went to anyone else because she and Angel were the front runners for it. She dropped a career high, 35 points against the Wings on Sunday. I actually was able to tune in and catch that game, so that was very cool to see, and set the WNBA rookie single scoring record, breaking the one that was set in 2006. She now has 761 points in 39 games. And um, she had this to say about her going ahead and breaking that record. She said, quote, it comes full circle for sure. I remember I got my picture with, and this is in terms to previously had um, the record. And that is Simone Augustus. She said that in 2006, like I said, 744 points in 34 games. Caitlin has 761 points in 39 games. And she had this to say about breaking her record. It comes full circle for sure. I remember I got my picture with her on my dad's little phone. I think maybe it was a BlackBerry back in the day. Oh my God, that just made me feel old. But okay, whatever. I definitely Um, had one. I had one in high school. Oh my God. (laughs) She didn't have to do that to us. She didn't have to do that. Little fuck his little phone. Damn, (laughs) Kaylee, we get it. You're young. (laughs) I vividly remember it. I was always a fan of her game and the way she could shoot the ball. Um, I mean, when we talk about Caitlin's season in comparison to some of the other incredible rookie seasons we had, let's just run through some of these numbers real quick. Candace Parker, who I love, I've already said she's my goat. 
18 and a half points per game, nine and a half rebounds per game. She won the MVP and the rookie of the year in the same season. The only player to ever do that, by the way. We have Tamika Catching. She had 18.6 points per game, 8.6 rebounds per game. She led the Fever to the first playoff appearance. She recorded 9.2 win shares, most ever by a rookie. Maya Moore, um, 13.2 points per game, 4.6 rebounds per game, and she helped the Lynx to the first of four championships in her rookie season. So those are the three OGs who are no longer currently playing, who not only help their teams win championships, but have also set records individually outside of having historic rookie seasons. So knowing all of that, where does her rookie season stack up against the other rookie season, specifically those three women that I just mentioned, because they also had other historic things happen during their rookie years? Yeah, this one's hard for me at the current moment in the season because we have not seen the postseason play. We know that the Fever have made it, which is right. a feat in itself that would sure. also go on the list of accomplishments for Caitlin Clark and her team, right? Uh, so it's hard for me to say, like, she would rank this and this without having that piece, right? We need to see what happens in this postseason play because all of these... Uh, Ricky years have that in there, right? Have postseason success, right? Yes, they have that in there. So it's really hard. I will say this, Candace Parker's number one. And that is on that. I mean, to be MVP and Ricky in the same season, everything that she accomplished. And a lot of people don't, I'm not saying they don't remember this, but one of the things is her impact on the league that she brought. Um, People talk a lot about this rookie class and they did phenomenal things. But I remember when Candace came in, how she just catapulted the league to new levels. She was almost doing it before, you know, I mean, she was doing it before like NIL and all of those things were happening. She had a phenomenal college career and people followed her over and she impacted that league in ways that nobody did. So that was definitely in there too. And I, I, there, you can't, she has to be number one. I mean, obviously, playing just playing devil's advocate here because people are going to be mad mm-hmm. and say, well, you know what he said? Obviously, Caitlin Clark did not win a championship. Candace Parker did. NIL did not exist when Candace Parker was in college. It exists with Caitlin Clark being in yeah. college. Would you say, though, that Caitlin, even without winning a championship and with NIL, has, in, has had an impact on the W women's basketball as a whole, specifically women's collegiate basketball also, Without having all those things, obviously viewership has skyrocketed. There was this was the most watched draft I think that we've ever had in the W, or at least in recent years, if I can remember correctly. The Fever National Games more than they've seen in a very long time. There have been other jumps that I won't say are solely specifically about Caitlyn, but I think that it's safe to say she was a major catalyst in a lot of the interest or the sudden interest. Um, specifically this particular season in WNBA when it comes to new fans or fans following her from her collegiate career. Would you say that? She has definitely been a catalyst and she has impacted this game in ways that we can't even measure. But I would also say that people forget about the piece that we had a whole rookie class that was doing that. Correct. The the rookie class was impacting it in ways. So I don't know. You can't just attribute the rise in the W or the changes in the W to Caitlin Clark. You can't, in my opinion. No, 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 of course. But would you say she was a major, like if you had to give out pieces of a pizza pie, would she get like half the pie and then the rest of the half is split up between everybody else? She has had major impact. She has had major impact. But I I would say Candace's impact when she was a rookie was huge well, as well i mean incredible I mean, we're talking well. mvp and rookie of the year in the same that's that's a huge accomplishment yeah. because not only are you rookie of the year but you're overperforming women who have been in the league longer than you so that in itself is just incredible so right let's make this more specific then let's take the postseason out of it because it hasn't happened yet we don't have a crystal ball well it's a two-parter then first part would you say it is the most impressive regular season rookie year 
out of all of the names that we just mentioned before we even start talking about awards and, and postseason success. If we just look at statistics line by line, would you say that hers has been the most impressive regular season rookie debut? I would put her in the top three. Okay, so what's so, your order look like? Um, my order looks like Candace Parker, Tamika Catchings, and then her. Okay. Um, if we're just if we're just doing regular season and that's just regular very, season right now. And I'm talking about I mean, when you think about the impact of people in their rookie season, Maya Moore, Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart, Elena okay. Deladon, like when you think about everything that they've done, it's not a slight to them by any uh sense of the word, but with the impact that she's had, her stat lines, um, everything that she's accomplished this year and will continue to accomplish in this mm-hmm. postseason, I I do pick uh, the Fever are scary right now. You know what I'm uh, saying? Like I'm excited uh-huh. to see them play in this postseason, but I I would definitely put her in that that top three. Um, for if we're just looking at stats and impact, um, mm-hmm. taking any personal feeling out of it on what has impacted me the most as a yeah. viewer and as a former player, um, I would say that. Okay. So for me, I'm going to lead with bias for the first part for my order. I'm going to go Candace Parker, number one. Yeah. Um, oh, she Candace was my Parker. number two. Yeah. No, 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 I'm saying, oh, I'm just okay. saying my list as I well. just wanted I'm, to make sure. Okay. I'm going, I'm going bias. This has no bearing on stats or anything like that. Candace Parker for me outside of the MVP rookie of the year thing. I mean, it, she was my introduction to women's basketball, the WNBA. I just think that it was an insane accomplishment not only what she did in her regular season debut, what she was able to do in terms of winning awards and, and things like that. Like, again, like I say, to be a rookie and to win MVP over women who have been in a league longer than you is absolutely insane. I think it's fair to say that Caitlin's not going to be winning MVP. I think it's fair to say she's going to be winning rookie of the year. Um, with that said, I'm going to go Clark number two, and I'll say why. I think that she's broken multiple records in her first rookie season. I think it's extremely impressive that this is the first playoff appearance for the Fever in 2016. I think they've been really actively working towards this with all their draft picks and their development, and I think that maybe this was the missing piece that they looked for. Again, I think that their ladder or their ceiling rather is so high. I think they have a long way to climb. I don't think they're going to be hoisting a trophy this season, but I think that to get to this point, a point that they've been actively kind of searching for, for such a long time is a celebration in itself. Um, I mean, she's the assist queen right now. When we talk about the WNBA, she broke that record single season record. I just think that especially with how her season began, And just the tumultuous kind of conversations that have surrounded her, the lack of a break that all the rookies experienced, the rookies who were able to see the entire season or most of it. Obviously, we had some injuries very early on, very unfortunate injuries. But, I mean, Caitlin, outside of that break, hasn't really had much of a break. And that's a lot as a rookie. We've had that conversation on the show. Um, So I'm going to put her at two, but I'm going to go Meyer Moore at three. For me personally, this is no knock to Tamika. I think what she did for the Fever initially, huge, huge accomplishment. But, I mean, we're talking about leading your team to a championship, the first of four. That's a huge, huge thing. The only reason I'm not putting her at two is because if I go stat-wise, regular season stats, Caitlin has her beat in that conversation. Well, we're, again, this is hard because the postseason hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, if this was a if this was a post conversation post season, that order might change. But if we're just going to go regular season with the anticipation of the post season, I'm going to go Candace Parker, my, um, Caitlin Clark, Maya Moore. That's going to be my order right now. Ask me again after the post season; it might change. <laughs> Listen, it could totally change because, like you know, we're going to talk about a little bit later. The Fever are looking a little scary right now. They we don't know good. what they're going to do. <laughs> Like, and, and so there could be a lot more to add to this conversation and we'll definitely have it. We'll definitely have that conversation um, as postseason play continues and as the W season yeah. continues to go. Um, I, I have to say, Ashley, though, these, these conversations bother me a bit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because it bothers me just because when I think about the players that set the foundation for this league, um, it it was such a hard thing to undertake 
it was such a hard thing to do. Some of the feats that they had during that time when play was different, the league was completely different. Um, yeah, for the sure. makeup of just professional women's sports was completely different. It, I, that holds a lot of weight for me. And so it's hard for me to have these conversations because I feel like we're leaving out really important people um, yeah. that should definitely get their flowers. But um, it, you know, it's important for us to have them, but it just makes me a little, un, you know, I just feel that's, why, that's what we do here on We Need to Talk. We have the important conversations. And speaking of important conversation and giving flowers where flowers are due, Deja Kelly, the collegiate basketball standout, is going to be joining us right now. She's going to be talking about her fifth basketball season, her collegiate basketball season, going this time to Oregon. I know Alicia is very, very excited. She's going to be starting so um, her collegiate season, I should say, with the Oregon Ducks and everything else that she has going on, fashion, uh, business endeavors, where her brain is going, and of course, a little bit of rapid fire. So take a look at this. I, for one, am really excited being from Oregon myself. We're going to get into this, but she's going into her fifth season of college. She is going to, or she is, I shouldn't say going to be, but she is a Oregon Duck. And Miss Deja Kelly, we are so excited to have you here today. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Hi. Listen, Alicia, I don't know if you know this, but Deja and I go back. I consider her a little sister of mine. Last New York Fashion Week, we actually did a lot of things together. We're both Tommy Hilfiger girls. But I really, really just have loved seeing her just flourish and grow. And not to talk about you like you're not sitting here, <laughs> but... but um, just even in the, the year that I've known her, she's just flourished and has her hand in so many different things. And I remember we actually had a conversation about this last fashion week at this restaurant in New York. And it was her mom, my mom, and a bunch of other people from our collective team. So I just first and foremost want to say how proud I am of you for really just diving headfirst and doing so many different things and having your hands in so many different pots. I wish that the industry was more, um, what's the word, accepting of that when I was your age. It took us a while to get here, but I absolutely love seeing, you know, the next generation have it a little bit easier. So what has been the favorite, your favorite part of everything since I've last seen you? <laughs> um, I think honestly, just a little bit of everything. I think just the whole process has been um, a lot of fun, a lot of growing, a lot of learning along the way. Um, like you said, just kind of dipping my hand in, in a bunch of different pots too, and just trying to be as versatile as I can, as kind of multifaceted as I can. That's really my goal um, to do, to to build my brand outside of basketball as well. Um, so I've really just been focusing on that since you last seen me um, and really just trying to, you know, focus on, like I said, continuing to build those different and, and take different avenues of my life and trying to grow that while I'm still in school because there's still so many opportunities um, that I can take advantage of. So again, to be able to kind of take advantage of all of those while I'm mean, just now what, turning 23. Um, just, yeah. So that's, that's been a lot of fun just within the past year. One thing that I read is that you wanted to make sure that you were going to go on a team that would get you the most pro ready. Why is Oregon that team for you? Yes. Um, knowing Coach Kelly and seeing kind of what he's done over the past few years with Oregon and with um, his teams and specifically with his guards, his lead guards, um, seeing how well he has gotten them for the pros. You know, you've seen Sabrina's, you've seen, um, you know, Cordy Vandersloot when he had Eric Gonzaga, you've seen um, a lot of players that he has playing overseas. Most of, of his guards are, are playing, are pros and doing really well. So, kind of just seeing that and trying to follow him in their footsteps and seeing that he um, is known for developing and getting his guards ready for the next level and putting him in the position within his offense throughout the season in practice, kind of how he helps them lead and guides them to be great leaders as well. Uh, just kind of seeing all of those attributes, I definitely knew that those would um, help me and eventually in the long run. And again, uh, I'm trying to continue to build my draft stock and uh, potentially be in the league. So just trying to learn from him and gain as much knowledge from him as well. And just, again, being in a system to where he uh, is going to put me in, in a really good position to thrive um, and continue to grow in the areas that I need to for the next level. That was kind of a no-brainer for me because I've seen that since 
high school just watching Oregon as well. So I think just, um, again, being able to be a part of that and being able to be under a coach like him, I'm really excited for. Obviously, you know, I'm a UNC fan. I have your birth <laughs> in my closet where, you know, UNC is kind of like where we first really started to hear your name frequently. And I just feel like it's really just was a trampoline for everything that you've been able to do since. So knowing what you did really, really well, when you were a Tar, he tar Heel, what do you want to continue to capitalize on? And what do you completely just want to change now that you're at Oregon? I want to continue to capitalize really off the brand that I built, you know, while I was at UNC, um, you know, just kind of in itself. Obviously, NIL started when I was at UNC. Um, so that was kind of a whole brand builder in itself. Um, and, you know, I was the UNC brand. That's what I was tied to. So now I'm kind of focusing on rebranding myself as well. And, um, you know, just kind of that whole area, just because I am in a new place, it's a new um, audience, new fans. So just, again, trying to rebrand re myself in a different way um, to continue to just to just grow in different aspects, you know, with, um, like I said, my own brand, just continue to build my fan base there too. Um, obviously, I, I uh, had four years to do that at UNC so it, I have kind of one year to do that now with within the Oregon space but um you know it's it's been great I think I, uh, I've you know talked to some fans already just trying to um you know make sure that they're ready for the season and uh, but yeah that's that's pretty much the big the biggest focus for me um especially because going from somewhere where you were at for four years um you know your name's kind of tied to that too so again like I said just kind of trying to rebrand myself in the best way that I can Man, you've definitely just taken NIL and done everything that you can with it. And when I think about this rookie class that we've had in the W um, this season and the impact that they've had, um, it has just been phenomenal. I would argue that it is the the top rookie class going into the as a collective going into the WNBA. Sure. How do you think that NIL has impacted how rookie classes in the W will impact the league? now and moving forward i think just with um being able to begin to grow yourself and as well just grow your knowledge within nil within college basketball while you're in college you've seen college basketball grow so much just within the past really like it feels like two years but just over the the course of um time and seeing that grow throughout nil you see how beneficial nil is because it, it expands your outreach through social media expands your outreach through the media coverage that now the sport is getting now specifically women's athletes are getting specifically the rookie class that they were getting in their last seasons of college leading up to the w leading up to the draft so i think that definitely helped um that rookie brand grow and expand and continue to grow while they're now in the league and i think it's also a huge stepping stone for those who are up next as well because now you're having eyes on okay, who's up next in college, from college? Who's up next coming into the draft? Who's up next who are freshmen and sophomores who are going to continue to thrive within the co collegiate space and who are going to be, you know, the up and coming eventually in, in the league. So I think just being able to see how much this recent rookie class has really boosted, um, I think kind of the coverage, the uh, fan base, the audience that women's basketball has gotten, you can really do nothing but um, kind of be really excited for what's to come because they have done a really great job of really, one, not only supporting, supporting each other, but also really trying to emphasize for everyone to watch for what's what's next. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, when we talk about going back to the NIL conversation and specifically, you know, Tommy Hilfiger, you getting very heavily involved in fashion while you're still in college is only going to be beneficial once you enter the league. Obviously, we've seen just a outburst, um, you know, in women's fashion when it comes to the WNBA specifically. I think that we've seen that in the tennis world. I think that we've seen that in other sports, but I think it's taken, you know, the masses a while to kind of associate fashion with women's basketball. I think that fans of the sport have always known that there are women within the the sport who have their own individual style and their own individual flair. But now because of this last rookie class, it's on a different platform, different eyes. I mean, we saw Caitlin Clark and Prada at the draft. We saw Angel Reese at the Met Gala. I mean, it is just a completely different space. 
what are you looking to do once you do decide to, to declare when that moment comes? How are you looking to take that love and that, you know, footprint you already have in the fashion space and kind of take that with you when you do enter the W? Yes, I think that's something that I've really been trying to dive deep into mm -hmm. over the, you know, kind of the course of my collegiate career. Um, but especially recently being a part of New York Fashion Week, really, again, having those conversations just kind of with people within the fashion world and trying to, um, you know, try to trying to figure out how I can get my foot in the door in different areas within that. Um, being a the first Khalid NIL ambassador for Tommy Hilfiger, I think that was a huge step for me um, to show my versatility within the fashion world and how much that is a part of the Deja Kelly brand that I really want to continue to grow and, like I said, continue to build with hopefully other um, partners as well, you know, throughout different areas but um and I think just throughout you see the tunnel fits I think that's something that's huge so being able to do that in college too I think just having fun with it but I love how much fashion and sports has really collided and um continued to rise because you see a lot of creativity a lot of personality through it so I think us females female athletes uh, specifically being able to show that side of us and show that we are more than just basketball players that you watch on your TV. I think that's also what the rookie class has done a really good job of is being able to show that side of them through their tunnel fits, through different fashion things that they're doing, different brands that they're wearing, that they're, they're sponsoring um, because it shows how versatile we are and can be and will continue to be um, just in that sense. There's obviously a bunch of different avenues that these women are taking and that us women are taking but I think just within the fashion world just being able to finally see that collide and beauty brands as well um you know hair products skincare just kind of seeing all of those kind of collide finally I think really speaks to how powerful women are and how versatile we are as well um listen like we started off by saying we are so proud of you everything you've accomplished I can't wait to continue to see you grow and develop and just expand not only your interests, but you know, your brand as a whole. You always know I am a phone call away if you need anything. Um, but I just, I can't wait to just see you continue to just do it all and not to be put into a box. I think that's the most important thing to just never allow anyone to just put you in a box. We, when we spoke to Ali Love last week and we always preach this, I know it's been something I've preached my entire career is I think that women can be so many different things. And I just love seeing more and more women as the years progress, really take that ideology and really just run with it. And I think that you are definitely one of the women doing that. So congratulations to hey. you. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds. Thank you so much. This is really fun. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then we'll definitely be following everything in Eugene and the Ducks. Yeah. Go Ducks. My dad was a huge yeah. Ducks fan, so I'm going to say it for him. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, great. Yeah, please follow along. Maybe I can come to the game. Just let me know. Will do. Um, I love her. I already said she's like a little sister to me. I'm just so proud of her. And again, I just love seeing, you know, women really taking – hold of the ideology that we can be so many different things and there's no box that we should be put in that we deserve to be put in we can be so many different things and we should embrace that while we can so shout out to Deja shout out to all the young girls you know that look up to her the girls who are doing it the girls who want to do it just just keep knocking down ceilings and breaking out barriers and whatever the sayings are do it all do yeah. it all we absolutely love to see it on every single level and yes. to see more of that conversation that we had, you know, check out on our YouTube channel, which is also a reason why you need to subscribe because you need to know when these full interviews are dropping, you'll get that alert. So go ahead and subscribe while you're at it too. Um, and watch that full interview because you got a really good part of it, but there's so much more with Deja Kelly. So thank you so much for being on Deja. Like definitely amazing conversation. And we're going to have another amazing conversation this week in Connecting Changes Everything presented by AT&T. So Ashley, you know, we still have a couple more games to play yeah. in this WNBA season, but we're really close to the playoffs. And listen, why don't we just jump right in and talk about 
who we think or who our picks are going to be to be in the championship. Also, I you. here we go. We already know what's coming. Who do you think I'm going to play? Who do you think I'm going to pick? <laughs> um, you know what's interesting, though? I will say the Aces look like their old selves again, but I also feel like there are a lot of other teams in that conference that could be maybe pull an upset because I don't think that the Aces have looked as dominant as they did this time last season where it was yeah. like, damn, whoever's going to face them is probably going to take an L. You know, so like I do think that's an interesting thing to look at, right? Still super dominant. We've already talked about all the records that Asia Wilson has broke broken this season. But if we're looking at the team as a whole, we've spoken about this as well throughout the season. They look a lot more beatable. It looks a lot more attainable to kind of shut them down and figure out how. So I'm uncertain about the West right now, but obviously taking it to the east coast my liberty <laughs> number one duh and if i'm gonna say who's winning i'm gonna go ahead and speak it into existence we're hoisting a trophy in brooklyn baby let's go liberty that's what's that's what's happening that's what's happening ellie's gonna be a champion listen your girl's gonna be a champion well as much as i want my girl to be a champion because i can <laughs> see her with that trophy okay she will act a fool we'll have all the tiktoks the reels and everything i'm here but you me. want that for your girl i do want that for my girl however when i look at the entirety of the season and the team that right now is has been consistent the whole right. year has been coming for people the whole year as a matter of fact they beat new york many times let me just put that out there. Are you going to go Minnesota? I'm going Minnesota. I'm going Minnesota. Minnesota for to to win the whole thing. Minnesota has been, like I said, the most consistent. Um, they had a little bit of trouble when Nafisa was out, as far as you know, injury wise, you know, and having the impact of her on the team, which she she is a legit MVP contender. Um, but also when you look at the team as a whole, um. They they have been killing it this whole this whole season this entire season you've had people step up um, for the the kind of like greater good of the entire team. Um, Cheryl Reeve actually said something that I she said that they're not a super team, which New York has been referenced at. Just I'm just putting that, but they're not a super team. They are a collective, and you can see that it's reflected in their play. It's reflected in their season. Um, I would not want to go up against them at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, I just feel like they will be the champions for sure. Yeah, Emma, I know you caught that shade, right? That's why I was like, mm, okay, whatever. No, no, I, <laughs> I, no, I was just saying some facts. Like, it, there was yeah. no shade involved. There was no shade involved. <laughs> you know I got love. You know I got love for And I'm going to tell Ellie you said that. She's no, not don't. Wrong. Ellie know we good. We right the here thing. with it. She's I will a winner in my though. eyes no matter what. Period. I will say this. Obviously, when we're talking about the Liberty, when we're talking about Minnesota, I feel like those are the the safer picks. But I want to go unsafe for a second, right? I don't think they're going to win the whole thing. But if I had to pick a team that could possibly upset the top four, depending on what the matchups look like, right? And prevent New York, Minnesota, Connecticut, Las Vegas from being one of the two teams, last two teams standing, because crazier things have happened. We talked about it earlier. The fever could really upset any of those top four teams to the point where we're not even talking about them at the end. I mean, they've been just hitting on all cylinders like that. They've looked really, really good. They're a team that I don't know if they necessarily strike fear in some of the more veteran teams, but they they're definitely a, they're right. But they're definitely a team that, like, you're a little apprehensive to play, especially when you talk the postseason where, like, one mistake gets you out the mix. I don't, I'm, I would keep an eye on the girls in Indiana. Oh, I 1,000% would, too. Caitlin, I don't know when she said this. I want to say it was, like, earlier today. But they asked her who she wanted to see in that, like, first round. And she was like, I'm not going to pick. <laughs> Why would you? 
Like, we gonna see, she didn't say it just like this. I'm paraphrasing. But she was like, we gonna see who we gonna see and we gonna handle them the way that we should. You know, like she basically said, why would we pick an opponent? All of them can get the smoke. <laughs> she, I'm definitely paraphrasing, but that's what she said. So, and I agree with her. Indiana is, when you talk about going into the playoffs, one thing about the playoffs is anything goes, right? Anything goes. And that's one of the magical parts of the playoffs and why I'm so excited to see these matchups is that people are here for it. We going to step up and we're going to show out. And I also have a, I have to give, I would be remiss. Like we could not leave this show without me just giving big ups to Washington. Um, they started off the season terribly zero and 12. Um, bad, a lot of ups. bad, but for them yeah. to be close to that, that eight spot, I just want to give them their flowers for that because they could have just bowed out, but they didn't. And I just, I have to give them that, but going back to, um, just the contenders in the playoffs, I'm just excited because anyone can get it. If you look at everybody who is there in the play going into this and just a lot of teams are right where they should be going into the playoffs. You talk about the aces, like they're playing some of the best basketball they played all season. So it's just going to be exciting to watch. I'm just ready for it to start. It's going to be so exciting to watch. This podcast is going to be, or continue to be, I should say, exciting to watch. But listen, Alicia's got a flight to New York to catch. I do. I'm right behind her. It is a hectic week for us here at We Need to Talk Now. So as much as we love hanging out with all of you, we got to go. Alicia, Alicia's already late for her flight Listen, as we speak. <laughs> this bag ain't going to pack itself. Make sure you guys are tapping into all of our socials. You can catch them here, specifically Alicia's socials, because you already know that with traveling to New York, she's going to have a hilarious tall girl story at TSA at the gate. Every time. Coming off the gate, trying to catch an Uber. You already know it's coming. So you I'm do just not want to fly. Miss I'm just trying to fly, actually. That's all I'm trying to do. You do not want to miss that commentary. You don't want to miss that IG reel. You don't want to miss that storytelling. You also don't want to miss the start of the WNBA playoffs. It kicks off Sunday, this Sunday. So make sure you're locked in there. Get make your sure popcorn you're following ready. us. Yes, get that ready. Make sure you get your subscribe mm -hmm. button ready so you can go ahead and follow us on YouTube. And again, if you rather listen to us, the QR code at the end of the show will got will have you covered. Um, we'll see you guys behind the scenes from New York. Peace yes. Out. See you soon.